Hello, welcome to today's business studies class. My name is Emmanuel Nguido. In today's class, we are looking at the theme, the keyboard as a communication tool, and the topic, correct keyboarding techniques. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to, one, define a keyboard. Two, identify the roles on a keyboard. Three, identify the divisions on a keyboard. And lastly, demonstrate correct finger positioning. We live in a society that has been made easy through the use of computers. These computers are made up of several components, which are either hardware or software. One of the frequently used hardware is the computer keyboard. In today's class, we will be looking at the computer keyboard and what makes up the computer keyboard. But first, what is the computer keyboard? A computer keyboard is one of the primary input devices used in sending commands, data, into the computer. It is similar to an electric typewriter. And this keyboard is composed of buttons that are used to create letters, numbers, symbols, as well as perform other functions. This device comprises of push buttons, which are regarded as keys. And without these keys, it will be difficult for a computer user to perform certain tasks. Let's go further by looking at the roles of the computer keyboard. The computer keyboard comprises four basic roles. These roles are the numeric role, the top role, the upper or home role, and lastly, the notem or bottom role. First, the numeric role. The numeric role is a section of the computer keyboard that contains numbers ranging from 0 to 9. It is basically used to impute numbers. From this image, this is where the numeric row is located. As I map it out gradually. So there you have it. 1 to 0. That's your numeric row. Going further, we have the top row. The top row keys are the 10 keys found above the home row on the QWERTY keyboard. The top row consists of the Q, W, E, R, and T keys on the left-hand side, and Y, U, I, O, and P keys on the right-hand side. So here you have it. Let's map it out. That's your top row, this section. Now going further, we have the upper or home row. The upper or home row on a computer keyboard is a section of the computer keyboard where the fingers are being placed. It is also known as the resting row. On a QWERTY keyboard, the home keys are the home keys are letters A, S, D, F at the left hand side and letters J, K, L and a semicolon at the right hand side. So from this image, you can see the hands placed on the home keys. Going further, we have the last but not the least, the bottom or bottom row. The bottom row keys are the 10 keys found below the home row keys on a QWERTY US keyboard. The bottom row keys Include the following alphabets Z, X, C, V, and B keys on the left hand of the keyboard, on the left hand side of the keyboard, and on the right hand side we have N, M, 
comma, period, which is known as your full stop, and a forward slash key. So let's map that out. Going further, let's look at the divisions of the computer keyboard. A typical computer keyboard is divided into five sections. These sections are alphanumeric keys, numeric keys, function keys, cursor movement keys, and the modifier keys. So let's begin with the first one, which is the alphanumeric keys. The alphanumeric keys consist of alphabets, numbers, and special characters. Any kind of information can be keyed into the computer using this part of the keyboard. The mapped out section on this image shows you the keys considered as alpha numeric keys. Going further, we have numeric keys. This part of the keyboard is placed at the right hand side of a typical keyboard and it looks more like a calculator. It consists of digits ranging from 0 to 9 with the four basic operations which are addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. It also consists of the decimal points and the norm lock key. Without the norm lock key, it is impossible to use the numeric keys. So whenever you need to use the numeric keys, ensure you switch on the norm lock key just by pressing it. Immediately a light comes up, know that that part of the keyboard is active for you to use. The next is the function keys. The function keys are designed to perform predefined activities on the computer. Going further, we have the arrow or cursor movement keys. These keys allow the computer operator to move the cursor anywhere around the working area. By pressing the up arrow key, you are moving the cursor upward. If you press the left arrow key, you're moving your cursor to the left hand side. Pressing the right arrow key moves your cursor to the right hand side and pressing the down arrow key takes your cursor downwards. Next, we have the modifier keys. These keys are used to modify the input of other keys. For example, if one requires to use a key that contains two characters, let's say the key containing the question mark and the backslash, and we need to use the question mark, that can be gotten through pressing the shift and that particular key which contains the backslash and the question mark. By doing so, you are able to get the question mark you required. The mapped out keys with a red box shows you the modifier keys on the computer keyboard. The next thing we are going to consider in today's class is the correct finger positioning on a computer keyboard. Basically, fingers are to be placed on the home row on the computer keyboard. Do not forget that the home row is made up of ASDF on your left hand side and the right hand side we have J, K, L and the semicolon. By placing your hands on the home row, you're giving the other fingers the ability to move freely and return to the home rows to rest. Like when you go out and perform other functions, you come back home to rest, right? That's the function of the home row. So when you place your hand on the home row, you are actually resting your fingers and allowing them to move freely when they need to perform their functions. Now, to see the correct finger positioning on a keyboard, let's watch an illustration. Hi, 
This part of the lesson is a demonstration on how to correctly place our fingers on the computer keyboard. Before me is a computer and I also have a keyboard. When using the keyboard, we have to sit upright on a comfortable chair. Then, position our hands over the home keys of the computer keyboard. The correct way to place the fingers of the left hand on the keyboard is as follows. Slightly place the little finger of the left hand on the letter A. Then, the ring finger on letter S. Place the middle finger on letter D. And the index finger on letter F. Now, place your left thumb on the space bar. This is the correct way to place the left hand on the computer keyboard. That was cool, right? Let's try it again. Okay. Slightly place the little finger of the left hand on the letter A. Then the ring finger on letter S. Place the middle finger on letter D. And the index finger on letter F. Now, place your left thumb on the space bar. Correct. Now, let's move on to the right hand. The correct way to place the fingers of the right hand on the computer keyboard are as follows. Place the right index finger on letter J, the middle finger on letter K, and the ring finger on letter L. Then, place the little finger on the semicolon character. Now, we're left with the right thumb. Just like we did with the left thumb, we will also place it on the space bar. Great! Let's try this one more time. Place the right index finger on letter J, the middle finger on letter K, and the ring finger on letter L. Then, place the little finger on the semicolon character and the thumb on the space bar. Now, we know the correct way to place our fingers on the computer keyboard. I hope that was educative. With that, we have come to the end of today's class. But before we go, let's take a quick summary of what we have learned today. In today's class, we learned that a computer keyboard is one of the primary input devices used in sending commands and data into the computer. We also learned that the computer keyboard comprises of four key roles. These roles are the numeric row, the top row, the upper or home row, and the northern or bottom row. We also learned that a numeric row is a section of the computer keyboard that contains numbers from 0 to 9. Next, we learned that the top row keys include the letters Q, W, E, R, and T on the left hand and letters Y, U, I, O, and P on the right hand of the keyboard. Next, we learned that, okay. Going on, we learned that the keyboard is divided into five sections. And some of these sections are the numeric keypad, the cursor movement keys, and the modifier keys. And lastly, we learned that the correct positioning of the fingers on the computer keyboard is that the fingers on the left hand should be placed over the letters A, S, D, and F keys, and the fingers on the right hand should be placed over letters J, K, L, and the semicolon key. At this point, I am about testing to know if you have learned anything in today's class. Let's attempt some questions. Question number one. A dash is a primary input device used in sending commands and data into the computer. Options A, keyboard, B, monitor, C, function keys, or D, home keys.
the right answer to question number one is option A, keyboard. Question two, the buttons on a computer keyboard that are either programmed or assigned to move the cursor in a specific direction are known as A, cursor keys, B, alphanumeric keys, C, function keys, or D, home keys. The correct answer to question number two is option A, cursor keys. This is where we draw the curtain in our class today. I hope by now you can demonstrate how to place your hands correctly on the computer keyboard. Until I see you again in another business studies class. Bye-bye.